Jonathan Cagan. Hey guys, how we doing? Yeah. Fantastic. I've got to be honest, so with everything that's now going on in the world, I'm really starting to miss the year 2019. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah. I even missed the news in 2019 when everything was about how terrible Brexit was going to be for us and how we were on the brink of climate disaster. Those were happier times. <laughs> I can remember when my entire generation was united in being furious at the elderly for voting for Brexit. And the general feeling was, this is all the old people's fault. Fuck all the old people. <laughs> I hope something just comes along and wipes out all the <laughs> old <laughs> Well, you know what they say, be careful what you wish for when talking on a Huawei phone. <laughs> now, I do appreciate you guys laughing at that one because we're now all on a database somewhere in Beijing. <laughs> you know, I think we've got to give the elderly some more love and respect. I spoke to my great auntie in the middle of all of this last year, and she's 92. And she said to me, Jonathan, I've lived through a lot. But I can tell you, I found this virus scarier than World War II. And that just made me think, how easy is war for women? I mean, <laughs> the army guy is not laughing at that. Every time. Sadly, my great aunt did later pass away from complications from the virus, but at least she died doing what she loved, blaming the Asians. <laughs> Stop Asian hate. You know what, I don't think you guys are fans, but I even miss little Greta. Anybody here a fan of little environmental Greta? No, I didn't think so. And hear me out. I think she's a decent advocate for climate awareness but a terrible advocate for childhood vaccinations. <laughs> now that is indeed your first autism joke from me this evening. But it's okay, I can actually make jokes about that because I personally watch anime. <laughs> I do, I love it. I love the Japanese cartoons. They're some of the best in the world. But my girlfriend loves Disney, so we do watch a lot of that. Anybody a Disney fan in here? Yeah, yeah fuck you. Someone's hand up at the back. What's your, uh, what's your favorite Disney film? Frozen. Frozen. See, my girlfriend doesn't like the film Frozen because it reminds her of what she's gonna have to do to her eggs. <laughs> oh, she's gonna watch this. <laughs> no, my girlfriend's favorite Disney film is Cinderella, and I think it's because she can relate to her because she also needs to leave the party before midnight, or she transforms into a drunk cunt. <laughs> My girlfriend is an absolutely terrible, terrible drunk. I need to tell you what she did. Okay, so the other night, we were at a friend's wedding. It was amazing and beautiful. We'd been drinking all day, and after we went back to a house party, and it was lovely, and we kept on drinking, and at that night, at 2 a.m., my girlfriend got so drunk that she just completely blacked up. <laughs> <laughs> not acceptable, I could not believe it, I was so embarrassed. The next morning, I told her, I said, that's not okay, blackface is racist, it's culturally insensitive, and it's historically problematic. She started crying, she said, you know what, you're right, I was emotional, I wasn't thinking clearly. I think I was on my menstrual cycle. <laughs> not okay, don't clap that. Do not clap that. I couldn't believe it, I was furious. I mean, it's the best pun I've ever heard in my life, but it's not okay. Just to conclude, blackface, not okay. Jewface, we'll discuss that in a minute. We'll laugh too hard at that one, okay. Before I get to that, do I have any fellow Jews in the audience? Yeah. Yeah? That Disney girl, okay. I mean, you love Disney, but he didn't love you. Um, <laughs> also, Frozen, that's like the blonde-haired, blue-eyed, Aryan film. You should be watching Prince of Egypt. That's DreamWorks, sorry, I'll cut that, cut that. <clears throat> okay, so I come from a Jewish family, and fortunately, I've never really received that much anti-Semitism in my life. 
Like there was actually one time where I got shouted at on the way home from synagogue, but to be honest, I think I was asking for it. I was wearing a very slutty yarmulke at the time. <laughs> recently, and this is true, but recently near where I lived, I saw this anti-Semitic poster, and it said that the Jews did 9-11. Now obviously this is quite an offensive idea because it leads into the whole idea that the Jews are behind all the bad shit in the world and there's this big global Jewish conspiracy controlling everything. But if there really is a big global Jewish conspiracy controlling everything, then what the fuck is my invitation? <laughs> I would love to get involved in a global conspiracy. Do you know how fun that would be? You know, pull some political strings from the shadows, magically change the weather with my Jew powers. <laughs> Inexplicably keep Barbara Streisand alive. But no, I've not been invited. And you know what? That's their loss because I'd be an absolute asset to the global Jewish conspiracy. And you know why? Because I'm a hard worker. I'm one of the hardest workers you'll ever meet. For example, I stand before you guys tonight weighing in at 11 and a half stone. Whereas this time, three years ago, I weighed over 16 stone and I got up every day and I ran up all that weight. Cheers. Uh, now, I am, of course, lying. <laughs> I would never let myself weigh that much. I just wanted a little clap. <laughs> so I stole one from you. Like the sneaky Jew I am. <laughs> You're laughing too hard at that one, Comedy Unleashed. They warned me about you. I feel like I've sold out my people. They're gonna call me an Uncle Shlomo. <laughs> That's just for me, that joke. <clears throat> Do you ever wonder why we clap people when they lose weight, but when they put on a few pounds, we don't boo them? <laughs> just for fun, can we try it? Just humor me. I mean, I'm gonna tell you I put on a bit of weight, and you're just gonna boo me as angrily and as harshly as you can until I tell you to stop. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Yes, the lockdown was a bit tough. I uh, put on a stone and a half. <laughs> Last time I bring my dad to the show. <laughs> yeah, but thank you for booing me. I just wanted to know what it felt like to be Amber Heard for a second. <laughs> a fucking psycho. Anyway. Uh, that was just something I, uh, I wondered. Do you ever... Do you ever wonder if the emperor knew the truth about his new clothes, but he just liked getting his dick out in public? <laughs> Do you ever wonder if Picasso was trying to paint realistically, but he was just very shit? <laughs> I feel like I was meant to be talking. Jew face. Okay, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> so, did anyone see on the news not so long ago? that Dame Helen Mirren got in a little bit of trouble for playing Gorda Meir, who was the first female Israeli Prime Minister who was Jewish. And because she was a non-Jew playing a Jewish character, some parts of the media said she was doing the Jew face. Okay? It's a funny word. Now this really, this story really resonated with me because Jew face was my nickname at secondary school. <laughs> it brought it all back. I mean, Jew face. It's such a ridiculous, it, it sounds so funny and racist at the same time, Jew face. Kind of sounds like a second tier Batman villain. <laughs> Jew face. It's a late night in Gotham City and atop a dark skyscraper, Jew face stands alone. And he's just about to commit a crime, probably white collar. <laughs> and just before he does it, he does his trademark move, he reaches into his pocket and he takes out a coin <laughs> and he flips it and then he invests it wisely. <laughs> Thank you for supporting live comedy. You guys are fucking amazing. You can just go for love you all. Cheers.